If you want some quick solutions using node modifiers in Blender, then in today's video, I will be going over a bunch of very interesting tools from a talented developer called Nodes Interactive. Tools for a topology, UV mapping, sculpting, cloth, you name it. By the way, if you are a Blender user, there is a bundle of 28 add-ons on sale right now. It is a fantastic deal, because for the price of $30, you will get what's worth more than $800. But the thing is, no updates are going to be available for this bundle. Still, more than 6,000 people got it already. Without further ado, let's jump right in. We're going to start with Retopo Planes, which is pretty much a geometry nodes based retopology system focused on garments. And it is especially handy if you're working with exports from Marvelous Designer, for example. It starts with a flat cloth mesh, and instead of manually placing quads all over, you can guide the topology with pattern-aligned planes. You drag the vertices to the borders, and the quads generate automatically based on cloth layout. The whole system actually respects UVs, in addition to snapping, and keeps the process relatively intuitive by showing you debug indicators, in addition to density previews in real time. You also get direct control over topology density, with edge creasing and sharp marking, which lets you dial in more resolution exactly where needed like around shoulders or sleeves. And once the mesh is done, the modifier can be applied cleanly, and you are left with low poly or sub ready cloth, which is actually UVs with UVs intact, and then they'll be ready for texture painting, whether it be inside Blender, Substance, or even ZBrush. Actually, it is not fully automatic, but it handles the boring stuff in a smart way, which I think is worth it. Now we're gonna talk about Solidify Plus which takes the standard Solidify modifier. It expands it with some extra control over rim loops, creasing, and extrusion shape. The general idea is giving a thickness to the mesh, but a little bit more control over how the thickness behaves. You can adjust the overall extrusion with a push slider, and if needed, you can drive the shape using a custom profile curve. It also provides separate controls for creasing and beveling on the inner, outer, and rim edges, which is suitable for hard surface modeling. To top it off, it has a free version, which gives you access to the modifier, while the full one unlocks the node setup for additional customization. Now we're going to talk about a tool called Adaptive Curve, which works more like a drawing assistant for procedural curves in Blender. It lets you build curve-based geometry with easier control over shape and transitions. It actually uses an adaptive multiply setting to adjust resolution based on the length and density of your input. So you're not manually subdividing everything just to get clean curves. You can convert your strokes into mesh-based curves and tweak the tapering over beveling using curve radius or extrusion right from the modifier stack. The interface stays minimal, but at the same time gives you enough control for layout and cleanup without jumping into sculpting tools. It is not a massive add-on in scope, but it simplifies what is usually a fiddly part of modeling curved elements. Plus, it keeps everything procedural so you can backtrack easily. Now we're going to talk about XYZ Mapper, which is a UV projection tool that lets you map textures onto a mesh using interactive gizmos. You see, instead of manual adjusting UVs or relying on automatic projections, the system gives you a direct visual control over how a texture wraps onto your object. You can choose from planar, box, cylindrical, spherical, or even custom projects, and you can move scale, or rotate the mapping using on-screen controls. It is actually great for laying out tileable textures across an object's surface, or creating quick decal placements without touching the original UV layout. And because it is non-destructive, you can stack different projections or adjust them anytime without rebaking or reuving your model. It fits especially well in shader-driven workflows, where you want quick material variation without committing to new geometry or baking. Next we have G-Surface Gen, which is a more specific tool. But if you've ever wanted to generate clean patch-like surfaces from curves, I think you should take a look at this one. So instead of working from edge selections, or even mesh loops, it uses grease pencil strokes to define boundaries. From there, the tool fills the region between curves with even quad-based geometry. It is mostly geared toward organic surfaces or stylized patch modeling. And while the name suggests that it might be used for hard surface modeling, 
The examples and the actual implementation lean more towards control surface generation using curve logic. Inside, you can control the smoothness, density, and UV layout within the geometry nodes interface, and it is all procedural. So edits to the base strokes will generate the surface cleanly. And generally speaking, it is more for creating topology from guides than bridging holes, and it shines when used for sketch-based modeling techniques. Now, if you're trying to simulate fabric tears, Tear Painter might help you. It is basically a modifier-driven tool meant for creating simulated fabric tears, and it does it without relying on simulation or texture painting for that matter. Instead of sculpting or drawing curves, it uses vertex groups and weight painting to define where tears happen. The tool then uses geometry nodes to apply masks and generate actual tear geometry with thickness, edge variation, and decay. And since it is procedural, you can make changes later and stack multiple tears without baking, which is really interesting. In addition, it respects your original mesh and UVs, so you're not introducing extra cleanup. And it is particularly useful for stylized ribs and damage on characters or props, especially when you want something art directable, without diving into destructive sculpting or simulations. And to be honest, it is not fully plug and play, but once your weights are in place, the control and flexibility make it stand out and make it worth it. Now we're gonna talk about modeling and specifically sculpting with this tool called Sculpt Bridge, which brings back a familiar modeling feature, and that is bridging. But it is built for sculpt mode. Rather than bridging between edge loops, it works between face sets, which makes it a much better fit for Blender's dynamic topology workflows. You see, you will get control over the resolution, tension, and fall off on the bridge, letting you shape the interpolation between sculpted forms. It works great for blocking in details or patching holes in high poly sculpts without switching to retopology tools. And unlike Blender's default bridging operator in the edit mode, this one fits right into the sculpting context, keeping the flow of your mesh and staying inside the sculpt mode. The next one is really interesting and it is called Wrap Master. This is a tool for generating wrap geometry along shapes. Along the shrink wrap modifier, it creates a new mesh that conforms to the source of the object, and it does it in a controlled manner. The tool provides presets for bandages, ropes, and chains, allowing you to quickly apply these wrap styles and adjust their fit, alignment, and volume retention. This add-on is ideal for accessories like belts, arm wraps, or any other objects that need to wrap around a body or shape. While it might seem like a projection-based tool, Wrapmaster actually focuses on creating new wrap geometry, which is particularly useful for cylindrical objects or stylized designs such as armor or sci-fi tubing, with several adjustable parameters including length, width, noise frequency, roughness, and strength, I think you will have all the flexibility you will need to create such wrapping effects. Next we're going to talk about Laces Generator which is designed to help you create high-quality shoelaces with ease. You can start by adding laces from the asset library, and from there, you can customize various parameters such as density, bend, pinch, twist, highlight, scale, and depth. As you might expect, the laces are fully procedural, which makes them flexible and easy to adjust, I mean throughout the process. They also have consistent trim UVs, ensuring that they look realistic while being optimized for different uses. And since it is based on geometry nodes, you can further edit the general appearances of the laces in the edit mode. Though the setup isn't fully automatic, it provides a nice way to create shoelaces from both stylized and realistic footwear, which I think can save you a lot of time and create some nice looking shoes. In a similar vein, the next tool is called Belt Maker, which helps you create belts, in addition to straps procedurally. And generally from what I can see, it offers a flexible approach to generate different styles of belts. So after adding a belt from the asset library, you can adjust the length, the scale, and even add holes. In addition to these basic controls, the add-on allows you to manage stitch parameters, like spreading, length, thickness, and offset. And if you prefer, you can also remove the stitches entirely for a cleaner design. While it primarily features cowboy-style belts, the add-on lets you drop your own meshes into the collection for more personalized designs. Though it might not seem essential at first, Beltmaker can save you time by handling the initial setup of belts and straps, 
giving you the control to refine the design features. Last but not least, we have Lazy Rename, which gives you actually a fast way to batch rename objects inside the Blender. It is designed with baking workflows in mind, helping you quickly add suffixes like underscore low or underscore high for exports. It only renames objects and its interface is laser focused on that one task. And by the way, this is a free tool. You can queue up renaming actions, preview changes, and execute them all in one go. It is lightweight, and it is ideal for working with imported content or prepping assets for baking or export, which can help you cut down on repetitive renaming chores. But most importantly, it helps you avoid mistakes because sometimes you find yourself doing this for tens of objects, which increases the likelihood of making more mistakes. And there you have it, guys. If you're interested in these node modifiers and GeoNode generators, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You could also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.